Hello and welcome to a video about 40 gig Ethernet upgrading in your home lab. So many people have 10 gig networks in their houses or in their home labs and we're going to talk about ways you could upgrade that to 40 gig relatively inexpensively. Uh, so we'll start with sort of the 1 gig, 10 gig transition was pretty easy because oftentimes you had uh, copper wiring could be cat5 or cat6 wiring um, and you could buy a new switch and new ethernet cards and use that same copper wiring um, from one gig uh, to 10 gig now many people also use a form of a fiber interconnect with 10 gig and a lot of 10 gig switches have these sfp plus ports on them where you can plug in these optics into them and that allows you to interconnect to a variety of different fiber uh, transport mechanisms and do 10 gig so very ubiquitous Almost all the switch manufacturers do that. Uh, you know, Ubiquity and Microtech and all the different vendors offer lots of 10 gig capable switches. I have a Ubiquity um, aggregation switch that has multiple um, SFP plus ports and you can use that to do a 10 gig connection to a bunch of devices. So that topology works really well and is, is really well known. And so we'll talk a little bit about that transition now to 40 gig. So when you, when you went from one gig to 10 gig, this physical form factor of these transceivers didn't change. It was named from SFP to SFP plus. Uh, but what changed was that the signaling profile went from a one gig signaling to a 10 gig signaling. It's still a single channel of signaling, but from one gig to 10 gig. And thus that means an old SFP optic can still plug into a newer SFP plus port and only run at one gig. And so when 40 gig was envisioned in around the 2010 timeframe, the idea was, well, let's expand the physical packaging. So they created these QSFP plus optics, which are just a little bigger. They're physically wider than the normal um, SFP plus ones. And let's just put four channels on here, each running at 10 gig. And that was done for a couple reasons. One is it enabled them to use, in some cases in the early days, some of the same chipsets that were doing 10 gig, just using four of the channels to do a 40 gig interface. Um, and so it made it for a pretty cost effective way to jump from 10 gig to 40 gig. Uh, there are some other factors about 40 gig that are interesting. I think when it came out, it was adopted pretty quickly in data centers. And so data centers bought a lot of 40 gig equipment um, pretty quickly and deployed it as a way to manage uh, more bandwidth using some pretty simple hardware. It was also enhanced a little bit by the presence of InfiniBand. InfiniBand is a technology, it's a protocol similar to Ethernet, but a little different, used in a lot of storage, um, storage array networks, and a little bit better for high volume transfers for low latency especially. And so a lot of big SANs will be, will be uh, InfiniBand based. And InfiniBand uses the same physical connections, same physical transceivers and is otherwise very similar to physical level, just a different protocol level. And both of those were getting pretty widely adopted in that sort of 2012, 14 timeframe, even up to uh, 2017, 2020. Lots of data centers were buying lots of 40 gig stuff. And the result of that is that today here in end of 2024, there's a tremendous amount of 40 gig hardware available that you can get that are retired from data centers. Um, more coming on the market every day, especially on eBay. Uh, as they upgrade to either 100 gig or 200 gig. And so there's a lot of hardware out there um, that makes it a pretty inexpensive way to do it. So we're gonna talk a little about how you can make that jump to uh, 40 gig. So as with one gig and 10 gig, you have the idea of switches and also a network card for a computer. And uh, you can buy network cards um, that have this, SF or this QSFP plus interface on them that can do 40 gig. And this is a Mellanox card, and Mellanox made a bunch of these. Um, they vary in versions. There's a Connect X3, which is the oldest, Connect X4, 5, and 6. The 3s are really cheap, like 30 bucks, sometimes 40 bucks. They have a few uh, limitations to them. The 4s are very popular. Um, and there are a lot of these on the used market because they were used in a lot of machines, were then eventually retired from data centers, and so they appear on the market. Um, as used cards. And these cards can be configured to do either InfiniBand or Ethernet over their 40 gig interface. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that cost-wise, you know, the card itself doesn't have the optics that go into the QSFP plus slots, just the ports for it. So you have to also buy whatever the physical interface medium is going to be for these. Um, the one limitation of the Connect 3, and I have a pair of Connect 3 cards in here, um, while it has two QSFP plus ports, so each one can do 40 gigs, so 80 gig total. Uh, the PCI side is a PCI 3.0 by 8 interface, 
which mathematically limits out at maybe 56 to 60 gigabits. So the PC side interface can't actually ever saturate 80 gigs. So you couldn't really get a full 80 gig with that card. Uh, not a huge limitation. You rarely would get that speed anyway. So it's still a great deal. They're super cheap uh, and, and pretty easy to install. The Connect 4 card, which this one is one of, can do both 40 gig and 100 gig. Uh, and it has enough bandwidth on the PCI bus to do to saturate them at 40 gig in each channel. Um, and they're a great option as well. So if you want to do 40 gig, there are a couple things you can consider. It could be you want to do 40 gig from your file server to your Proxmox cluster. So it's just two connections. If that's the case, you could just buy two cards, plug into each machine, and then you need some way to connect the cards together. And certainly one of the cheapest ways, where did my cable go? There it is. Uh, to connect two things together over 40 gig is to buy a DAT cable. So this is a copper cable that has the transceiver ends on it. And these DAT cables are really inexpensive, especially used. Um, the biggest limitation is, of course, it's a copper cable, so it can only go somewhere from a half a meter up to about seven meters. So within a rack, it can be a fantastic way to do it. Maybe the other downside is they're, they're a somewhat firm cable, um, somewhat not easy to route in a dense form. And so if you had a switch and you had 20 of these, it, it would be kind of a little bit of a mess. You can still do it, it's just, it'd be just a little, a, a little, a little messy. Um, so this is a cheap way to do it, buy two cards and one of these cables, and there are people on eBay that sell the cards with a cable for this reason, uh, and you can get a 40 gig interconnect between two machines. Now if you wanna do more than that, if you wanna have four or five machines and really have a 40 gig network, you're gonna need a switch. And there are lots of options in the switch space um, I have two of them here that are both relatively cheap eBay available switches. This is a Mellanox SX uh, 6036, which has 36 QSFP plus ports. Um, and this is an Arista, this is a 7050, which has 32 ports. You know, both of these are probably in data center somewhere and were retired and are available. I think the Mellanoxes are maybe $300, something like that. So they're, they're, they're relatively cheap. Um, each of these can do 40 gig ethernet. Now the Mellanox is a little more interesting a lot of Mellanoxes that were sold were sold for people doing InfiniBan. And while the switch can do 40 gig ethernet, it needs a license key installed to do 40 gig ethernet. Um, there is a somewhat well-known way to do this without any special tools. You can Google that pretty easily um, in order to be able to configure one. Sometimes on eBay, you'll see one being sold. They don't mention it's already been configured for 40 gig uh, ethernet. So these are pretty easy to find, pretty inexpensive. You can still download the OS versions. And actually I upgraded this one, I think six revisions uh, by downloading each different vision and upgrading it. Um, they're easy to configure. The interface is very similar to iOS, Cisco iOS. Uh, you know, it, internally it presents each QSFP interface as four interfaces and you can bond them together or use them independently. Um, you know, the usual things, VLAN routing, all that kind of stuff is very easy to do uh, and pretty straightforward. The Arista is similar. This is a similar vintage era part, uh, 32 ports in this case. The one thing on the Arista is, is that uh, up to, I think it's version maybe 12 or 14, it's pretty easy to use a command to disable it checking the brand of the transceiver and locking you into Arista transceivers. Um, and the newer ones require not only a command, but also a key to do that. So be somewhat aware that if you buy one, be careful about upgrading to newer versions of uh, the OS because eventually it may break that. Um, and it's nice to be able to use sort of any brand of optic uh, in your switch in case you're buying a bunch of different brands. Uh, that's less of a problem with DAT cables, but more with optics themselves. Uh, so, you know, with that in mind, you can buy either one of these and be able to do 40 gig interconnections. I mentioned the DAT cable, that's one way to do it. So a section option that's somewhat inexpensive is buying a QSFP optic, this is one from Melanix, that uses a multi-mode cable with a connector called an MPO connector. And this is a little connector. This fiber actually has 12 fibers inside of the sheathing, not one. Uh, and all 12 fibers are present on the end of this. They're all those spaced out. And if you use one of these cables with this MPO connector plugged into this optic, it uses eight of the fibers as if there were four 10 gig channels. And so, um, it's relatively inexpensive because these were used a lot in data centers for like kind of short interconnects. With the multi-mode fiber, you can go 100 meters. So you could run this in your house, certainly, a single fiber like this. Plug it in on one side, plug it in on the other, you got 40 gig. So it's a pretty easy option. Obviously, you can buy these in different lengths. That's somewhat inexpensive because these are widely used. There's a lot of users on the market for this. Um, that's easy to do. Uh, you also can get... 
a single optic and I have one here that is a QSFP optic that for single mode fiber. So a single pair of single mode fiber that you might normally have installed. You can run 40 gig over, could be one kilometer, could be 40, could be 80 kilometers, a wide range of optics in that space. Uh, if you already have single mode installed, this is a fantastic way to just plug the single mode in and you get 40 gig from point A to point B. Um, the optics are slightly more expensive for single mode in this case, but, but not a, a ton. Um, another really cool option is, uh, here's one here. This is a Cisco one, but I have a, a bunch of different ones of these. Um, this is called a bi die optic, and it's designed to allow you to use a single multi-mode fiber pair using a single um, LC connector. So you may have this already installed, maybe it could be in your house or routing between switches. And you normally do 10 gig over this, and this optic will do 40 gig over it by using four different wavelengths that are spread across very close to 850 nanometer, um, but over a single multimode optic. And it works, you know, up to maybe 100 meters. Um, and it works with your existing multimode fibers. You just plug it in and go. And these are surprisingly not super expensive used because there are so many of them on the market that were used in data centers. Because normally a multi wavelength optic would be a little bit more expensive. Um, but it is an easy way to just use really cheap infrastructure to get uh, 40 gig. Um, one other thing about 40 gig that's cool is that if you have one of these, <coughs> excuse me, one of these optics with the MPO connector, you can buy a fiber that on one side has the MPO connector, but the other side is four LC connectors. And so you can use this to bridge between 40 gig technology and 10 gig. So you could plug one of these into a standard SFP plus 10 gig interface and kind of connect your 10 gig world into the 40 gig world. You also could do four of them and bond them all together and get 40 gig from your 10 gig capable switch. Um, and so it's a great way to kind of bridge from 10 gig to 40 gig because 40 gig is really just four 10 gig channels. So it's an easy uh, topology change to do. Um, one of the things worth mentioning is that I mentioned the transceivers. When you buy a transceiver, it could be, this is a Mellanox branded one. You could buy an Arista branded one. Um, if you buy one from someone like, let's see, uh, like Fiber Store, if you buy an optic from them, you can also buy from them a little box that allows you to reprogram their optics with different, to appear as a different brand transceiver. And so you can get this box, buy the optic from them, plug it into the box, and then configure it to look like a Cisco or like an Arista or like a Mellanox. And if you do a lot of them, it's a nice thing to have. Uh, Flex Optics also has an equivalent setup, and I use Flex Optics a lot. They make fantastic optics. Uh, and they also have a programmer box you can use to allow you to reprogram those optics to look like a variety of different optics. And they have an excellent program for tracking them down and figuring out which profile will work in a given device. Um, and so if you're going to do a lot of these, it may be worthwhile to um, invest in that. Um, other than that, it's a somewhat straightforward jump to go from 10 gig to 40 gig. Another consideration is that you know this SFP form that you can have one gig and then SFP plus is 10 gig. There's also SFP 28, which is the same form factor, same single channel, but that channel runs at 25 gig instead of 10 gig. And as you can imagine, if you take this in the 28 form and you multiply it by four, sure enough, you can buy optics that are QSFP 28, and it's got four channels that each run at 25 gig, which gives you a 100 gig optic. And as far as the switches go, a lot of new switches the port itself can either do QSFP plus or QSFP 28. So it can do either 40 or 100, usually on a per port basis. These are just 40 gig only switches, which is why they're so cheap. Um, you can certainly buy new ones today that do 40 and 100. Over time, the switches that do 100 will start to drop in price and there'll be more of those available as they kind of come out of data centers. Uh, right now, the 40 gig is just all over the place because there are so many data centers that have sold off equipment that you can buy. Um, and they're pretty easy to configure. So if you're looking to get into 40 gig, you can get one of these switches. You can get some of the Mellanox cards. Um, there are some great threads on how to configure them. There's a couple options you have to set to convert them, to set them to be Ethernet um, and not InfiniBan. Um, and there are a couple different tools you can use to do that. Um, other than that, they're supported under Linux. They show up as a device, like a, a network device like normal. Um, it was very easy for me to get this box up and running and have a 40 gig connection. As I mentioned, the only limitation of the older, the Connect X3 cards, is they can't quite do um, the full 80 gig. Meanwhile, the newer Connect X4s and 5s can do a little better at that. Um, so keep that in mind when you're looking at buying cards. But it's a great way to get into 40 gig, and I encourage you to experiment with it because 
uh, it's a way to get more bandwidth and a little more capability out of hardware that you might already have. And that's it for today.